uh, there are several words of prophecy that God had given me this morning. Others he had given me at a later time and I was planning on the time of release because just because you have had it, it does not mean that you should declare it. Not every word of prophecy that has been revealed by God is for declaration. There are certain things that God tells you so that you can be aware and there are certain things that he tells you so that you can utter them before men and so that you can utter them to men. And there are things I'll be uttering. And as I utter these things, I encourage you to inquire of the Lord about my utterance. And I'm stating that uh, for your benefit because uh, there are many times we hear, but we don't inquire about what we've heard. And as I've often taught and as I have often said, when it comes to Damien, if you can hear me, one of our viewers is saying there is no sound. Damien, if you can hear me, one of our viewers is saying there is no sound. Oh, okay. I think maybe it's, it's on their end. Um, so, as I was saying, as I have taught before, and I consistently teach this, I consistently utter this intelligence about the invitations of wisdom. And... As I, as I have said, uh, I will repeat again, and I'll say the following, that whenever God utters anything, uh, there is an invitation for us to enter into that utterance and to move beyond that utterance by that utterance of the divine. And I've said that wisdom is in layers, the utterance of wisdom is in layers, and that wisdom hides, wisdom hides in her utterance. Knowledge hides in the utterance of knowledge. Understanding hides in understanding. So these specific words that I'm going to utter, take them as an invitation because they are an invitation by God. For you to go beyond and to move beyond these specific utterance and come to higher aspects of gathering the knowledge that I am presently articulating. So that's why I'm saying, inquire of the Lord about these utterance. So the first prophetic word that I got, uh, this was this morning as I was preparing to come to church and God said the following uh, due to the judgment coming to my body, now uh, the body is the church, those that follow men instead of me will be disappointed. To avoid disappointment let them shift their gaze to me. Let them shift their gaze to me. And it was added unto that and it was said that true disciple points to God, not to themselves. And he says, shepherds that have been pointing men to themselves and not to me have failed. They have raised followers of men and not of Christ. And the verse that came with this specific uh, prophetic word was, there was a time in the body of Christ, uh, in the church of Corinth, where there was division. Some were saying, I am of Paul. Others were saying, I am of Apollos. And others were saying, I am of Peter. And Apostle Paul handles this by saying that one sows and another one waters. Uh, one plants there and another one waters. And he said that what are, are we? We are just instruments. It is Christ that does this. And he says Christ is all in all in the church. And oftentimes or not in the body of Christ, we follow men instead of following God and there is an, an invitation that Apostle Paul gives and he says follow me as I follow Christ follow me as I follow Christ he is inviting people to follow Christ as he is following Christ so he's pointing people to Christ he's not pointing people to himself so that's the first word and it is a prophetic word to the general body of Christ and the reason why God is saying to avoid disappointment, let them shift their gaze to me, is because there are many times that believers, members of the body of Christ, they get disappointed because of the men they follow. And because of getting disappointed by the men they follow, they give up. They give up. They give up on their walk with Christ and they backslide. So God is saying, shift your gaze to me. Shift your gaze to me. Shift your gaze to him. That is what he's saying. Then the second word of prophecy is to the general body of Christ. We should be careful not to, 
we should be careful not to demonize technology because of not embracing its possibilities within the parameters of divinity. We should be careful not to demonize technology because of not embracing its possibilities within the parameters of divinity. Uh, personally, God has been talking to me about technology and if you've listened to my teaching uh, concerning the church, I have stated that one of the functions of the church is to lead in technological and infrastructural development. And that is a reality because infrastructural development and spirituality and growth in Christ together with technological advances cannot be separated from true spirituality and cannot be separated from the mind of Christ. But the reason why God is saying this is because uh, the church has had this habit of demonizing technology. Yes, technology has a role to play within the negative aspect of existence which has to do with the kingdom of darkness. But beyond that, there are possibilities of technology within the parameters of Christ. And because we have not embraced those possibilities, those technological possibilities, as the church, we tend to demonize technology. And God is saying, be careful not to demonize technology because you as a church, us as a church, have not embraced the possibilities of technology within the parameters of divinity. Within the parameters of divinity. So God is calling us to be careful, but God is also calling us to be discerning and to come to a place of not only understanding the possibilities of technology within the parameters of divinity, but to come to a place of articulating and producing uh, technologies within the parameters of divinity for the glory of God and for the benefit of humanity as a whole. And we come to another title of prophecies. And this prophecy is to spiritual fathers. This prophecy is to spiritual fathers. And this is what, uh, this is something that the Lord told me a while back. And I retained it until its time of utterance. And the prophecy is this. It says to spiritual fathers, the mistake of fathers has been interpreting their sons with experience rather than revelation. It is revelation that brings experience into context. Seek the Lord concerning your sons. Your experience is not the penultimate. Your experience is not the penultimate. And I want to read this again to spiritual fathers. The mistake of fathers has been interpreting their sons with their experience rather than revelation. It is revelation that brings experience into context. Seek the Lord concerning your sons. Your experience is not the penultimate. Your experience is not the penultimate. God is not disqualifying your experience. God is not disqualifying your experience at all. Your experience has a role to play in fathering. But God is saying, don't interpret your sons from a place of your experience, but interpret them from a place of revelation. Because the revelation you receive concerning your sons is what will bring your experience into context and is what will make your experience effective and productive. Now, this other um, aspect of, prophet, of the prophetic words I had received from God, there is a prophetic word to the body of Christ in Kenya. We have prophetic words to the body of Christ in Kenya and there are two. Uh, the first one, I posted this a while back on my page, uh, on my Facebook page. And this conversation is still ongoing with God. And God asked me the following, who are your fathers? Who are your mothers? Who is manning the gates of your cities? Many cities in Kenya don't have fathers. And in relation to Nairobi, Nairobi also does not have a father that sits over it. And he says, many of those we call fathers of the cities are not fathers of the cities. And when it comes to fathers, we have fathers over cities and we have fathers in cities. These two are different ranks and different functions of fatherhood and different functions of motherhood. So we have fathers over cities 
and we have fathers in cities we have mothers over cities and we have mothers in cities and this is a question that God asked and is asking it in this nation and concerning this nation and concerning the cities of these nations and I will do we as the voice of God international ministries we will do a teaching about uh, the intelligence of cities the intelligence of cities it's something that we have wanted to talk about for a while because uh, God has also been speaking the same thing uh, to Pastor Brian he's a pastor here at the Voice of God Church at TVOG uh, Nairobi and God has been talking to him about this same thing and the second prophecy to the body of Christ has to do with uh, to the body of Christ in Kenya has to do with the situation, the current situation that the body of Christ in Kenya is in. And the Lord told me this hour back, he said that the church in Kenya is in a David soul situation. It is in a David soul situation. And he said soul is leading the church because David is not ready. And he said this is not by accident. It is by design. David will rise and David will shepherd. David will rise and David will shepherd. And when I inquired more about this, uh, it was revealed to me that there are many ministers that are serving in the body of Christ that God has rejected and these are souls and God is going to raise David. God is going to raise David and presently God is raising David and David is David, yesterday we were praying and God was talking to us about David and there are a couple of prophecies that came forth about the spirit of David and the outpouring of the spirit of David. And David is a shepherd after the heart of God. David is a shepherd after the heart of God. David is, it doesn't just have to do with shepherd but ministers. David has to do with ministers that are seekers of God's heart that are concerned with the administration of the heart of God. Their concern is the administration of the heart of God. And this is something that we'll see in the nation of Kenya. So I do not know how long it will take, but I know for certain based on this word that there is going to be a change of God as far as the pastoral reality of the nation of Kenya is concerned. David is going to rise and David is rising and David is going to shepherd God's people in this nation and it is not I'm not speaking in the political aspect the word that came forth was not in the political aspect the word that came forth was had to do with pastoring, had to do with shepherding and it had to do with ministers as well. It had to do with ministers as well because when you speak about ministers it also involves worshippers, it also involves ministers that are functioning in music as well because the intelligence of David and the spirit of David has different dimensions and different functions and one of the functions of the spirit of David has to do with music. It has to do with music, it has to do with the psalmist anointing, it has to do with the psalmist grace, it has to do with uh, seeing as well, it has to do with see, uh, seership as well, it has, it has to do with the prophetic, and it also has to do with uh, kingship, it also has to do with kingship as well. And these are dimensions of this spirit, and these dimensions of this spirit will be made manifest in this nation through shepherds that God is raising up and God is causing them to come to platforms and God is going to give them influence in this nation and they will manifest according to these different realities and different aspects of David. Some will receive the dimension of David that has to do with uh, being a psalmist. Some will receive the dimension of David that has to do with seers, a seership, the ability to see. Uh, in the spirits and the prophetic aspect of that, some will receive that which has to do with kingship. And when it comes to kingship, we are talking about thrones, kings and thrones today, and we'll be talking about them tomorrow. When it comes to kingship, we have kings over nations, we have kings in nations, and both will play out. Both will play out, and both must play out. There's an echo. If you can 
they will not bless you. So, God's will play out when it comes to the requiring of the spirit of David, when it comes to the rising of David, because the spirit has already been poured out and the spirit will be poured out and David will be raised in this nation within the context of the body of Christ. So those were the words of prophecy that, that God had given me and God had called me to share for him so that we can come to a place of understanding and also to a place of alignment and to a place of preparation. And I want us to pray. We are going to pray and we are going to seek the face of God and whatever else he reveals we shall utter it. Father we bless you. Father we give you glory. Father we magnify your name for your word. That you have shared this word, Abba Father. That you have revealed this word so that it can be shared. And we thank you, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus for your faithfulness. We give you glory because you reveal your mind, Abba Father, and you reveal your counsel. We pray that you reveal the intelligence of alignment in this Akashikita. <laughs> 